Hey y'all, I'm Elisa, the scrappy wife behind scrappywife.com and all of these custom planner spreads have a fun twist. Today I am working on four brand new custom planner spreads for the month of October. We have a spread for Nikki that is going to be a monthly spread involving some mixed media. Then we have Teresa who is already planning for a fabulous birthday in January. So we're going to create a spread for her using a little bit of wrong wrong scrapbook paper a really fun gender reveal spread for Jennifer. And then my newest platinum patron, Carolyn, wanted pumpkins and a typewriter in Isaiah 61.3. And so I'm here to give that to her. So I will put you guys on fast forward. You can see I'm using a ton of different things. Kelva plan, live, love, posh, wrong, wrong, and just some good old mixed media. I will link everything that I use down in the description box below so you can be sure to check those out. I also have coupon codes for several of these shops, so check down below for those as well. All right, let's go. All right, so first up is Nikki's spread and she requested a water watercolor themed spread. And instead of watercolors, I ended up using these Lindy's Magicals, which are pigment powders that you can turn into watercolor. And what I'm doing right now, spraying down a piece of watercolor paper, kind of playing with some of the pigments, mixing them in. This particular set is actually called Autumn Leaves, which seems very appropriate for the month of November. And I'm just blending them all over this particular piece of paper, kind of playing with the colors. When you are blending colors um, with watercolor, you want to make sure that you're not going to muddy them on purpose. And that means being careful which colors you're putting right next to each other. So I didn't want to put the green right next to the red. I had to separate it some with some yellow and brown in between. I didn't want to put um, the blue, right? I, it, it's all about kind of balancing out where it's going to be. And in this case, I'm just using a ton of water having fun, playing with the colors, just seeing what develops. And then I'm going to use this sheet to stamp images on. And using an outside piece of paper, in this case, a watercolor piece of paper, that's a great way to play with some mixed media, but not necessarily put it directly into your planner. Now you're going to see I'm about to paint all up in this planner anyway, but it's not necessary. You can play outside your planner and then use stamped images, cut boxes, all kinds of things, and put those papers into your planner if you are nervous about putting mixed media in your planner. And I would be, I wouldn't do it on the back of a page that I was planning to use. I only do watercolor, mixed media, things like that when I'm inserting a page into a planner, not a page that I couldn't remove, not a page that I would want to use the back of. Um, I just wait and use it when I'm going to insert that particular page. And as you can see, I'm just stamping all of these fall leaves. This is actually a stamp set from By the Well for God, um, which is a company that I used to be on the creative team. Great, great stamps there. And then I fussy cut all those out. I just did that off camera so you wouldn't have to see. All right, now I'm playing a little bit more with pigment powders. I definitely poured out too much. These go a little bit goes a long way. You don't need a lot, but I was just gonna have fun mixing these onto my page. So I poured out the uh, powders and then I just spray them. I'm just going for it, spraying directly over them. You can see it creates a lot of different color and I'm going to put that color here on the bottom of the monthly spread that I plan to use. Does this go through the paper? Yes, for sure. Shadows go straight through, but like I said, this is a page that uh, Nikki will be able to insert into her planner. She can use tape or glue to adhere it to another page that is already in her planner, and it's not gonna be a problem, the fact that it bleeds through. I was most definitely going for that drip effect. I wanted the colors to be just kind of exploding out from what I plan to put at the bottom of this page. But before I do that, I do have to dry it all the way. And before I dry it all the way, I figured, you know what, let's just really go for it as far as the watercolor. And I'm going to just splatter 
across the page. So this is going to be watercolor heavy. And the cool thing about these powders is that they have a cool shimmer to them, like a gold shimmer, which is absolutely beautiful in person. It's not really getting picked up on camera, but so pretty in person. I took a good long time to dry this really well before I started doing the rest of this page. And I'm pulling dates now from Mojo Jojo's Date It sticker book. I do believe that she has another one um, in the works. So definitely check her out for more of these sticker books because I get asked about these all of the time. So I did the dates for November. Now I'm just using some Tombow adhesive and the leaves that I cut out to line the bottom. I wanted it to look like all of this color was kind of bursting from these fall leaves. Seems very appropriate for the time of year. So we're just going to work these all the way across the page, then I will trim them off. I'm not going to go super heavy. I know it probably seems like I already went super heavy. I'm not doing a ton of other decoration around this particular page. It has a big wow moment. It's got the watercolor. It's got some sparkle. It's got tons of fun stuff. Will Nikki be able to write over the top of the water watercolor? Yes. Yes, she will. So um, you can see there how it went through the page. But again, she's going to adhere this into her planner. And so she'll be putting another page behind it. It's not going to be a big deal at all. Now, the original plan was actually to keep the leaves all at the bottom. But once I did that, I really thought it needed something almost like the leaves were falling down. And so we're going to add a few more leaves across the spread. Again, just adhering them with my Tombow adhesive. This is pretty thick paper because it is watercolor paper that I stamped the leaves onto. So I'm trying to be pretty generous with the adhesive to make sure it stays on. Once that is done, we're just going to add a few boxes for a few of the dates that Nikki sent me. Um, I'm using jewel tone colored boxes from Mojo Jojo Plans, and these are actually sized for the monthly layout, which is absolutely perfect. I'm going to add a couple over here on the side just for running lists, great for planning events and things like that. So we're going to put that and that's going to be it for this monthly planning spread. Nikki, I hope you love it. It is definitely watercolor, definitely fall, but has um, a little extra color because I think that's uh, extra fun. So that's Nikki's watercolor spread. All right, next up is Teresa's spread. And Teresa's birthday is in January. So she is planning in advance for her birthday spread. And I'm super excited to use some paper. Wrong Wrong actually released a whole scrap pad full of paper last year, maybe last fall. And it is so fun to get to incorporate some of those other elements into your planner. So I'm going to use that spotty dot. And then I'm also just using some pink cardstock because Teresa said go crazy with the pink. So that's what I'm going to do. We're going to create that as the background. I'm just going to trim down these planner pages so I have just the boxes and then we'll start to put it all together. This is actually a super easy way to incorporate scrapbook paper into your planner spreads, especially if you have some older planners that are maybe outdated. You can cut out the boxes and reuse them. Just size your background, your scrapbook paper down to seven inches wide, nine and a quarter inches tall. Then you can see all you have to do is adhere these boxes on just like this and then repunch the pages and you are ready to go. Now, before I start the all out decorating, I am going to add the days of the week here at the top. Again, Mojo Jojo's Date It Basics uh, sticker book. So um, this one is one I use all the time. I actually have two copies and I will probably be picking up her new one as well. And then I'm going to add in the dates here at the top and then it will be all ready to decorate. I love that you can just use these dates and create a unique spread like this. Again, something that she's just going to be able to pop into her planner. The stickers that I chose um, were from Wrong Wrong this time around. It's my birthday, her planner sticker pack. I love these because they are very girly, lots of pink, lots of purple, a ton of celebration. So I'm going to put this sticker that says today is your day with the little wine glass. We're going to put that right on the 26th which is her birthday. And then a double box kind of over Friday, Saturday, Sunday, because I figured she could write her birthday plans in that double box. Love this woman who is like celebrating her birthday to the fullest. I put her kind of in a um, layer with the box and then took one of the washi tape looking stickers that says happy birthday. 
underneath and layered another box at the bottom. So that is a big cluster that is taking up a huge portion of that right side of the spread, but I think it makes a nice impact um, because it's surrounding where her birthday celebrations are gonna be. Let's just continue. We're going pink and purple all over the place. We got some boxes on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday on these custom planner spreads. This is obviously really far out. I would imagine Teresa doesn't even know what she's going to do on these days, but you can still decorate things in advance. Just make sure you have box options on every day, that you have some checklists, that you just have some options to write in, um, and then you don't really have to worry. It's okay to decorate in advance and just be a little flexible with where you're going to write some of the different plans you have going on. You can see as I work my way around the page, I'm trying really hard to balance the pink and the purple and to make sure that there are boxes available all over. And then when I'm placing stickers down, because I'm not using sticker guides, I'm being really careful to not press them down really hard in case I have to pick them up. I will say the wrong, wrong white sticker paper, A, is fabulous. It's some of the best sticker paper um, ever. And it also peels up really nicely if something isn't quite working out. I was trying to find a way to get, I'm, I'm trying to fit this pink box. I think overlapping this direction makes a little bit more sense because I wanted to be able to have some bullet points on Sunday. I'm gonna fill in some of the awkward white space in a few places. It was a little bit of a trial and error on some different sections of this, but I like how it all comes out. In the end, I'm gonna end up putting some black bullet points from Mojo Jojo Plans and then leaving that sidebar kind of open. If Teresa needs a little bit more room to write, she can add a sidebar sticker later on. But otherwise, I think that's going to be it for Teresa's birthday spread. Happy super early birthday, Teresa. I hope this spread uh, is already making you excited to celebrate in the coming year. Next up is my newest Platinum patron member, Carolyn, and this is the very first spread that I'm creating for her, and I am excited. I pulled this stamp. So she asked for pumpkins in fall and typewriters and the verse Isaiah 61.3. Um, I love this stamp set from Illustrated Faith. It is an older stamp set, so no longer available, but I stamped out the typewriter on some old book paper that I had in my collage um, box, and then I typed out the verse here, sized in this particular way, printed it out, and now I added a little bit of Distress Oxide ink just to um, make it look a little bit more old as if it were coming out of the typewriter. So that's how we're going to include the typewriter and the verse. Then, of course, for the pumpkins, I just love this beautiful set from Kelva Plan. This is actually Fall Florals Volume 3 from Kelva Plan. I do believe it is still available over on her website. What I love about this particular set in the sticker book is that it has so many peaches in it. I think peach mixed with orange is beautiful, and then the color green that she mixed in as well, absolutely gorgeous. So we're going to create a little... A little array of pumpkins here at the bottom, just a big old pumpkin gathering. I'm gonna save this little piece because of course, whenever I cut a sticker off, you know that I'm gonna replace it somewhere else on the page. So let's add that over to this section. And that's where our typewriter is gonna be. Now we have the pumpkins kind of setting the tone and then I love these extra long sidebar stickers. These are so perfect because they go all the way to the top. I've been having discussions with my patrons about what do we do with the month at the top? Do we always need the month up there at the top of the page? I feel like I don't. I like the dates on it, but I don't always need it to say the month. So let me know what you think. Month, no month, what do you think? Got a balance. So I have the long sidebar on the left, a double box of that same green on the right. Got the typewriter down on the page. Now let's add some functional boxes. I figured because this is my first spread for Carolyn, we're gonna go with something very straightforward as far as the checklist in the middle. We'll do functional boxes at the top and the bottom. That should give her plenty of room to write. When I'm creating spreads, I start to get to know, or at least I feel like I start to get to know some of the preferences of my patrons. Do they like mixed media? Do they like things looking a little cleaner? Do they like a ton of stickers? Do they like a ton of writing? You start to get to get used to their style, just like you start to get used to your own style um, of decorating pages. So I figured let's go pretty straightforward and then kind of see what Carolyn thinks. All right, I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to fit in. You can see me, I'm like testing all of these different boxes. 
how the arrangement's going to go. I wanted to make sure to include something on Saturday. That typewriter with the verse is very, very big. So it takes up a lot of room. I kind of thought the double box that is at the bottom of that page would give her room to write in case she needed something on Saturdays as well. This is an undated spread, so I did white out the dates at the top but I wanted to add just a little bit more flair up there because when you just leave it blank with the whiteout, I just think it doesn't look quite as nice. I know that she is going to take some date stickers and cover up those whiteout spots, so you're not even going to see them in the end. But I figured, you know what, let's go. We're going to be a little bit sticker happy. We're going to just go for it and really bring the theme all the way up to the top of the page. Just placing some of the extra little bits here and there. And then all I have to do is trim those off cut the two pages apart and that will be Carolyn's first platinum spread. Carolyn, I hope you love it. I loved creating it for you. It definitely has all the fall feels. Um, I think it came out really, really well. All right. So next up is going to be Jennifer's big dashboard spread. And she asked for a gender reveal spread, which I have never done one of those. I think that's very exciting. Let me know a, have you ever been to a gender reveal party? B, have you ever done a big gender reveal yourself? Maybe um, maybe you helped with one. I would love to hear about it down in the comments below. I never really did that um, with any of my pregnancies. I just shared the news instead of doing the big party, but I think they are so fun. And actually, they're some of my favorite little reels to watch on Instagram. I love watching the gender reveal moments. When I was thinking gender reveal, obviously I was thinking pink and blue. Let's do a mixture of pink and blue. And I ended up going with Live Love Posh. Now I will have this link below and I do have a coupon code for Live Love Posh. So if you use code SCRAPPY10 at any point when you want to shop over there, it'll save you 10%, which is a fabulous deal. And also I've also used Wrong Wrong stickers in this video and you can find a link down below in the link for Wrong Wrong that I have saves you 10%. I don't have a coupon code. You have to use that link to save 10%. So we're going with some Live Love Posh, the pink and blue florals. She released these a while ago. I don't even know if they're in stock anymore, but I loved, loved, loved these sticker books. We're going to go on the edges, down the spine of the page. Absolutely love it. And then what I'm going to do after that is actually combine it with Posh Party. Posh Party is a big sticker book from Live Love Posh that encompasses all kinds of different celebrations that you might do throughout the year, um, a couple of which seemed to be baby showers. And I thought, well, let's pick out some baby shower stickers that kind of um, encompass the pink and blue. So we're going to do that and have it mixed in with where the florals are so that you definitely get the feel um, of the baby shower, the gender reveal, that whole, that whole feeling. So you knew I had to pick the rainbow, right? Like that was a given right at the beginning. I'm going to go back and forth, figure out where I can put these stickers. I kind of um, had some trouble figuring out where I wanted all the stickers. Like I just... Some of them went right away. I just couldn't figure out the balance over on the left side to balance out what was happening on the right side. You can see I went, I'm just testing out. I think where I put the rainbow to start with kind of threw me off for the rest of it, but that's okay. I'm trying to go every other one, like blue, pink, although the pink ones aren't really pink, pink. They're like pink and yellow, so they definitely could be any uh, any gender in blue and pink. I get it. It's whatever color works for you, but we're just trying to bring in the feeling of the, the babies here. So let's do a little few passies right there. Love, love the spine. Okay. Now let's play with the left side of the spread. Normally Jennifer does more of a bullet journal style over here on the left side. A lot of times I've even given her a completely different um, left hand dashboard side. In this case, I'm just going to cover up some of these areas, give her some boxes. She can kind of do with it what she wants. If this is for an actual gender reveal party, maybe she's got, you know, celebration plans, present plans, registry plans, things like that to um, include. So I, I had a little trouble going back and forth with these boxes, especially because I was pulling boxes from Live Love Posh, and then I realized I didn't have all the dark blue. And so then I pulled from Mojo Jojo Plants, and then I just went back. It was a whole thing trying to make the blues work. In the end, I decided that instead of trying to match all the blues, I would just embrace lots of different blues so that you didn't focus that one or two didn't match. It was just a lot of different blues across the page. 
All right, now I'm using some stickers from Kelva Plan. I also have a link for her down below. These are the Alpha Basic stickers. Perfect, love, boy or girl, perfection. And then we're just gonna bring some functionality over here on the right side of the spread. We're gonna go pink and blue on every other day of the week just to change it up a little bit, add a little bit more interest. I ended up changing the color of pink on the titles over here just so that would match over on the right side because like I said, sometimes I was running out of some of these stickers and I needed to kind of make it work. So we're gonna move those on the page and then just add a little functionality to the back end over here with boxes and a few more baby stickers and that is going to be it for Jennifer's gender reveal spread. These were all super fun to do. Definitely some planner spreads with a little bit of a twist. I would love to hear from you down below. Which spread do you like the best? Did you like Nikki's watercolor spread, Teresa's birthday spread, um, Carolyn's pumpkin and typewriter spread, or Jennifer's gender reveal spread? Let me know down um, in the comments below which one kind of spoke to you. Like I said, I do have all of the products that I used linked down in the description box below. So be sure to check that out. It helps me out so much when you are able to shop those affiliate links. And so a big thank you in advance. I want to give a huge shout out to all of my Patreon members. Thank you all so much for all of your support. We're having a great time. The month of October is all about junk journaling over in Patreon, and we'd love to have you join us. It's never too late. You can start your free trial by clicking the link in the description box below. All right. I hope that you have a fabulous day. And as always, keep it creative.